Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this second lecture on Jawaharlal Nehru. In the previous lecture, we have discussed his uh, uh, personal political life, uh, some of his writings and how through discovery of India, he was try also trying to find himself fit in or make himself aware of or familiar with Indian history, its past and its philosophy and its uh, civilizational evolution. And we have also uh, discussed his views on um, religion, religious harmony uh, and all. Today uh, in this lecture, we will focus on um, uh, his views on secularism and uh, we will begin with uh, very briefly his views on um, how to uh, lay a foundation for modern India and how that foundation should not be guided by any religious, uh, regional, linguistic or any scriptive identity such as caste, ethnicity, race, etcetera. So, he wanted to uh, mould India or lay the foundation of modern India on, uh, on a solid uh, base of his uh, uh, philosophy of liberalism or the sole merit of individual and his worth and accordingly he should get or she should get certain rights and privileges which should not be uh, on the basis of his or her uh, membership to a particular community. So, the relationship between individual and the state and the rights and privilege that is given on the basis of uh, uh, that relationship is uh, given by uh, given on the basis of individuals uh, membership to the state and uh, uh, the citizenship has and its rights has nothing to do with his or her membership to a particular caste, community, religious or otherwise. So, uh, Nehru uh, articulated such thoughts in his um, uh, Trist with Destiny much before that during the uh, national movement also, he along with Gandhi and Congress tried to um, mould uh, national movement towards a secular politics and not a kind of revivalist religious politics as it was being argued by Muslim League or Hindu Mahasabha and many other religious organization. And certainly after the independence, Nehru tried to give it a official status and, uh, 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 and that we will uh, discuss on his views on religion, secularism, critique to uh, Nehruvian ideals and how uh, far his uh, uh, notion of secularism is relevant in contemporary India. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss some of these uh, uh, questions. So, to begin with his a speech of Trist with Destiny, which I hope you all and request you all to read and listen to, which is widely available on net or also on YouTube. There he expresses some of the cherished ideals of uh, freedom fighters and what should be the basis of future, uh, future India. So, in this text on the eve of India's independence towards the midnight of 14th August 1947, uh, Nehru delivered a speech which is titled Trist with Destiny to the Indian Constituent Assembly in the Parliament, where he stated and uh, I quote, long years ago we made a tryst with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our place, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. It is fitting that at this solemn moment, we take the place of dedication to the service of India and her people 
and to the still larger cause of humanity. So, this text or this speech of Jawaharlal Nehru, which is widely read and perhaps one of the most influential political public speech in modern India, here he substantiate the pledge or the ambitions, the ideals of nationalist movement and how once the freedom is, is achieved, not uh, completely as there are many challenges that has to overcome, uh, have to overcome uh, and there was partition of the country as well which nobody desired and yet the circumstances compelled the leaders to compromise on, uh, on that uh, issue. And uh, there was the communal stripes, uh, communal polarization and um, social economic challenges. So, uh, Nehru is uh, uh, very clear even when there is this Solomon occasion of independence, he realizes the challenges or uh, how that uh, uh, freedom is not complete, but very substantial and that freedom is to dedicate uh, the state its um, uh, resources and policies to the service of India and her people and uh, there is also the universal strength of thought in many of the Indian political thin, uh, thinkers including Gandhi uh, or Nehru and he uh, goes on to explain and to the still larger cause of humanity which transcend the geographical national boundary of India. So, uh, through this text with twist with destiny he virtually laid the foundation for modern India and played a significant role in determining the basic features of Indian society and polity. So, during his long years of 17 years as the Prime Minister, he has the defining influence in shaping the polity and state and society in India and how he influenced the institutions and how he laid the foundation of certain um, uh, prominent institutions and developing the scientific rational uh, temper we have discussed in the previous uh, previous lecture. So, uh, these key tenets of democracy, socialism and secularism were his greatest contribution in the making of modern India and uh, his views on secularism we have also covered in the previous le lecture. So, I request you to uh, go back to the previous lecture and then follow uh, what we are going to discuss today where we will focus more on his views on secularism. So, his views on democracy, sec socialism and secularism were his greatest contribution in the making of modern India. He gave a particular mold uh, or direction to the polity in free India and uh, three of the major tenets of such uh, direction was uh, democracy, socialism and secularism. Nehru favored a strong and secular state which is very different from Gandhian conception of decentralized state where he wanted power to flow from bottom to up. Uh, Nehru had a very uh, vision of a very a strong and secular state or interventionist state for social and economic transformation. So, Nehru favored a strong secular state in order to maintain social stability and religious harmony among the diverse groups and communities in India. So, Nehru realized the role of a state and its nature as a secular state, not a theocratic state uh, as Pakistan or some other countries, where uh, it is difficult when a state declares uh, a religion as a state religion and then to maintain a society which is deeply uh, uh, plural or uh, uh, there are different religions and uh, uh, believers of different faiths. To maintain uh, harmony and peace in such a society, Nehru believed that a state which, is, which should be a strong state must have a secular, a secular character, but his understanding of secularism is very different. Many of you may, uh, may uh, come across this conception that uh, in opposition to Gandhi who talks about Sarva Dharma Samvav that is equal respect to every religion or uh, all religion. Uh, Nehru is a western conception where he want, it want a kind of uh, uh, separation of politics from the religion. But Nehruvian understanding of religion and also secularism is far more complex 
then this simplistic differentiation of Nehruvian notion of secularism, which is a kind of separation from of state and religion to a uh, Gandhian notion of secularism, which is equal respect for all religion that we will discuss in a minute. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Nehruvian understanding of a state, which should be a secular state is essential for maintaining harmony and peace in a society, which is diverse in terms of its religious practices and belief systems. But before uh, discussing about uh, Nehru's notion of uh, uh, secularism, it is uh, also uh, necessary or desirable perhaps to understand his views on religion. So, to look at uh, religion and especially in India, where religion has been and continues to be a defining feature of Indian life and society. So, so much of uh, religiosity which governs all spheres of individual and collective life in India. So, it is almost inevitable that all the thinkers and public intellectuals or the leaders, political leaders has to engage with this uh, notion of religion. And in some of the thinkers we have discussed say uh, Raja Ramon Roy to Tagore to Vivekananda, to Arvindo Ghosh and Gandhi, we have dis seen how they engage with the question of religion and role of religion in the public political life. And for many of them, the religion is the basis for the morality or a particular uh, world view. And uh, of course, there are uh, uh, differences in their interpretation of religion, but they all engages with the uh, with the issue of religion and role of religion in India's public political life. So, and this we see in our contemporary times also, where there is invocation of religion and religion as the basis of formation of nationhood or uh, uh, giving certain rights to certain communities, protection of certain communities and a lot of debates that is uh, going on in our contemporary India as well. So, religion continues to have a kind of defining power Indian life and society. However, the traditional character of society with its pluralistic, medieval, feudalistic and caste ridden base has left India divided, hierarchized and without a, a strong unifying force. So, for many of these modern political thinkers, the task was how to unite India, which is divided on so many lines, caste lines, linguistic lines, regional lines, uh, religious lines. Now, uh, they thought of uh, unifying uh, this India on the basis of nationalism, but what should be the characteristic of that nationalism? Should that nationalism be based on certain religion or it should have a secular character? So, Nehru along with Congress and Gandhi, despite of using the religion certainly in Gandhi, uh, vocabulary or terminology, he used a lot of um, uh, uh, words and concepts which uh, derived from a particular religious tradition. But Nehru is a uh, different um, uh, uh, articulation of religion and its role in public political life. So, uh, so they were also trying to constitute or to imagine a nation or nationalism which should be able to unite India. And therefore, uh, Nehru, Congress and many other leaders tried to construct a nation without uh, any uh, attachment to a particular religion and religious tradition. Uh, however, there have uh, been many as we have discussed in Savarkar certainly, the Hinduism or Hindutva for him as the basis of uh, Indian nationalism. Certainly, Muslim League or Jinnah and Iqbal mean uh, thought about Muslim or Muslim uh, religious tradition as the basis of uh, uh, Pakistan. So, uh, there were those who argued about unifying uh, India on the basis of religion and religion caste leads to hierarchy and social divisions that needs to be overcome, but how that can be overcome and that uh, becomes some of the greatest concern of uh, modern Indian thinkers. So, uh, despite of the religiosity in India, we also had a strong tradition of toleration or what we call accommodation of religious differences. But the question for these thinkers then was, should that uh, tolerance which has a negative connotation of it. It is like we do not agree with you, but we tolerate you. It is a kind of certain patronizing approach towards the other or the different. 
So, we have this strong tradition of toleration or accommodation uh, of religious differences, but the question for these things is that the should religion be a guide of morality and ethics in modern politics. So, uh, for them the politics is not just an end in itself. Politics for them or acquiring power through politics is for larger good of uh, India or still the humanity, but uh, for that there is a need to uh, connect politics or political programs with the question of morality and ethics. For many uh, like Gandhi and others thought about religion as the source of such morality and ethics and therefore, uh, certainly in the logic of uh, Gandhi uh, the conception of religion is very different from say in uh, uh, Savarkar or in Iqbal, uh, where there is a kind of uh, belief in one's religion. but accommodation or uh, mutual coexistence with other or different uh, religions. But uh, for uh, Nehru, the role of region or scientific temperament in others becomes the basis for such, uh, such uh, uh, questions of morality and ethics. So, he also tried to then conceptualize morality and ethics be, uh, beyond the resources of religion, which uh, turn out to be more religious or uh, which is uh, turn out to be more dogmatic, superstitious and based on organized ritualistic, uh, uh, ritualistic uh, kind of uh, uh, propagation and it uh, suppresses its uh, own followers. So, there is a hierarchy within a religion. So, intra hierarchy intra-religious hierarchy or inter-religious hierarchy or domination is something uh, Jawaharlal Nehru was trying to grapple with. And he thought region or uh, constantly thinking or pondering upon such issues of ethics or a spirituality, which remains uh, a uh, vital force in his thinking and thought. And many uh, in, in many of his speech and writings, he dwell upon this question of spirituality, ethics and morality, but what should be the basis of such morality, ethics and uh, spirituality or the humanness. That should uh, be the work of constant uh, uh, use of mind or constant reasoning uh, uh, and uh, uh, for what purpose that, uh, that should be. So, so ja uh, Jawaharlal Nehru was trying to base uh, his conception of ethics and morality on the basis of reason and not religion. So, Nehru general outlook towards life was not controlled by religious beliefs and practices. He developed a kind of skepticism towards all forms of organized religion from the very beginning. And this is clearly manifested in his numerous writings and speech including his autobiography and also the discovery of India. So, uh, it was rather difficult for him with all his rational and scientific training and temperament to adhere to superstitions and dogmas of religion, whether Hinduism, Islam, Christianity and other religions. So, Nehru considered region or uh, science as the surer basis for conception of morality and ethics than superstitious belief or dogmatic belief in any practices or uh, organized form of religion. So much so, even he subjected Gandhian ideals of non-violence and satyagraha to this uh, uh, rational inquiry and um, uh, 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 critique and realized that as a viable or appropriate method of achieving independence in India. So, he, he did not have a blind or uncritical acceptance of any ideals or any um, uh, forms of um, uh, practices or belief systems. So, Nehruvian understanding of religion is um, not a kind of rejection or complete re rejection of uh, uh, religion. Uh, he uh, accept some tenets of religion as self inquiry, which allow one to think about the larger questions, which science or rationality fails. And there is a kind of dialogue between uh, Gandhi, Nehru and Tagore also, and all of them were trying to conceptualize a notion of ethics and morality, which should be appropriate for the modern life or the modern individual. And there we also find in Nehruvian conception 
he comes closer to Tagore in his rationalistic or scientific outlook than to Gandhi and yet intuitively he was also follower of uh, Gandhi and perhaps he shared a um, closer uh, or intimate relationship with Gandhi and his thought and ideals but he subjected even that to the critical or rational inquiry and that becomes a matter of his um, um, a, a criteria, a heuristic principle for him to uh, subject his decision and look at the world more objectively rather than uh, through the prism of any dogmas or superstitions or belief systems. So, Nehru's agnosticism which is like not complete rejection, but not or but not also complete uh, uh, belief in something. So he developed a agnostic approach to uh, religion or any form of re uh, organized religion. So Nehru's agnosticism and scientific temper could not but make him a non-religious man, and he claims himself not as a Hindu, not as a Muslim, or as a Christian, but he developed a kind of indifference or agnostic approach to to the religion and yet he was deeply engaged with the spiritual questions, the question of humanity or humanness in him uh, 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 also forced him to engage with the question of religion at the deeper level, at the fundamental, fundal, uh, fundamental level. So, his secular spirit inspired him to establish a secular society based on the notion of justice, liberty and equality and he said our ardent desire is to see people of India united together and not divided on religious lines, caste lines, linguistic lines or any other lines, so that we may frame a constitution which will be acceptable to the masses of Indian people. And this acceptability of constitution, if it is based on a particular religion or a particular tradition or it caters to the need of a particular community, then it will not be acceptable to the masses of the Indian people, every uh, section of Indian society. So, therefore, the task of constitution is something which should be acceptable to the every section of every section of Indian society and through that he uh, envision a kind of unity or India's can be united together only on the basis of a secular constitution or a secular state and secularism therefore for uh, Nehru was a creed as a basis for the um, uh, uh, establishment or for the for the uh, shaping the polity and state and its institution in modern India. So, for him secularism was not only a political doctrine or a belief in the uh, political nature of a political aspect of this question about secularism, but a social one of revolutionary character which embarrassed all religions. So, there is no rejection, there is no undermining of uh, religion, but uh, a kind of critical approach to religion where certain dogmas, certain uh, superstitions and uh, irrational practices and beliefs needs to be uh, um, uh, criticized or challenged and yet he wanted a state which should distance itself from all form of religion and should not uh, uh, prefer or uh, promote any particular religion or creed. So, for him secularism was not only a political doctrine, but a social one of revolutionary character. So, think of a society which is deeply religious and he want that society to develop a kind of united uh, force or a kind of solidarity which should be based on complete freedom of equality, liberty and justice. So, opportunity should be given to everyone uh, without any consideration to uh, their belonging or their membership to a particular caste or a community or a religion. So, and that he wanted not just to be limited to the state and polity but it should encompass all sphere of society as well. So, therefore, uh, the secularism for him it is a uh, revolutionary character which embarrassed all religions and all communities in India. It means a social structure where individuals would not be subjected to some hierarchical position in society on the basis of one's faith or religion. It means a certain mental attitude on the part of individual and groups 
towards the members of other religious groups and communities, intergroup and interpersonal relations are not supposed to be affected by religion and religious consideration. So, he wanted to construct a society, not just a state and polity on the basis of secularism. For him, secularism should be the basis which uh, will bring egalitarian uh, uh, society into existence from a deeply hierarchical feudal caste ridden society in India. And for uh, uh, Nehru, secularism is not just about religious uh, uh, domination and countering religious domination of one community over the other, but it also entails removing all kind of hierarchy, be it between men, women or be it on the basis of caste. However, his own conception of secularism takes different shape when many of his followers, which we can also call Nehruvian, their uh, uh, understanding of sec Nehru's secularism was reduced to protection of minoritism, which leads to a lot of criticism of his model. But for Nehru, secularism is also about bringing radical transformation in society to remove any kind of hierarchy uh, or uh, divide, which is on the basis of religion or caste or gender and interfaith or in, uh, interpersonal relationships that individual shares in the society should not be guided by any religious beliefs or irreligious beliefs or uh, the space for those who do not believe in religion. So, um, uh, for uh, Nehru, the role of religion in society or the secularism is towards transforming a society into a more egalitarian um, uh, society devoid of any hierarchy on the basis of caste or religion. So, now if you look at this conception of secularism, we find according to Nehru, secular philosophy neither mean irreligion, that is something we need to emphasize on. For in contemporary debates, the usual uh, critique and the very often you hear that uh, secularism is automatically mean or seen as anti-religion or anti-religion or irreligion irreligion, but for Nehru secular philosophy mean neither irreligion nor only material well-being or just the scientific or brute rational outlook to life and um, uh, society. It contained a spiritual elements also and his concept of secularism has uh, many four aspects that we will discuss uh, one by one, but uh, most important thing that we need to keep in mind here is that for uh, uh, Nehruvian conception of uh, secularism, it does not mean irreligion or absence of religion, but it engages with religion and uh, create a, a state which is not guided by any of them and yet engages with uh, those who uh, uh, which requires state interventions to prevent uh, domination of one religious community by the other be it majority or minority, but it has of course, different nuances which somewhat get left out in the post uh, Nehru or what you call uh, his followers conception or articulation of secularism. So, in his conception of secularism, the question of a spiritual as we were discussing about morality and ethics is also deeply embedded there and characterize his understanding of secularism and that is why he is not an atheist, but a agnostic. He dwells with a spiritual questions, the question of ethics and morality and yet uh, do not want to be guided by any particular religion, certainly it is organized form of religion. So, if religion is about religiosity or uh, about uh, developing a better self or about self inquiry or about uh, developing a ethical outlook to society, uh, to community, towards self or towards other, then uh, uh, perhaps Nehru will agree to such conception of uh, religion. But if it is about a kind of uh, routine, organized, dogmatic uh, structure of religion, which creates hierarchy between one religion and the other or between within one religion between the priest, the ulemas or uh, the Malvis or the pandits and the followers, uh, Nehru has deep problem with such conception of uh, religion. So, in his understanding of secularism, there is no absence or irreligiosity in the 
conception of secularism. Now, to discuss these four aspects of uh, secularism in Nehruvian conception of uh, secularism, the most essential feature of secularism according to Nehru was the granting of equal status to the religion. In other words, the question of equality. All religion, all forms of belief systems or practices are regarded equal in the eyes of a state according to Nehru. So, he believed that the right to perform religious ceremonies should certainly be guaranteed to all communities and no preference, no preferential treatment in terms of organizing or believing or um, uh, performing certain ceremonies or in certain beliefs and practices. So, no religion should have any special privilege and no community should be deprived of its legitimate rights on the basis of religion. So, in other words, the state and it rights it sanctions to the citizen is independent of their membership to a particular religion or not. So, a state treats all religion equally. In other words, it does not make any discrimination only on the basis of their membership to a particular religious community. So, unlike Savarkar, where we have seen the Hindutva, the question of who is Hindu and uh, therefore, the basis of Hindu Rashtra and uh, their uh, status in such Hindu Rashtra because they belong to a particular community is very different from Nehruvian conception of individual or um, the role of religion. So, the question of equality becomes crucial in his conception of religion. So, he writes, I find it difficult to appreciate why political or economic rights should be should depend on the membership of a religious group or community. It can fully understand the right to freedom in religion. So, uh, the freedom uh, right to freedom in religion is something which he wanted to guarantee to every member or community without any consideration of their beliefs or faith. So, to him it meant equal respect for all faiths and equal opportunity for those who profess any faith or do not profess at all. So, the question of equality is uh, the crucial one in his conception of uh, uh, secularism. So, in modern plural society, the concept of personal faith and personal conduct must be uh, respected. Secularism is a federal principle applied to a federal society for the welfare of the whole and not few a particular group but the whole section or the whole community. So, Nehru declared we are building a free secular state where every religion and belief has full freedom and equal honor, whose every citizen has equal liberty and equal opportunity. So, that is his conception of secularism where the personal conduct and personal belief is something which is respected or guaranteed by the state and the constitution and there is no discrimination on the basis of uh, any particular uh, uh, religion and religious community and the membership there, uh, thereof. Now, uh, to look at the second feature of uh, secularism according to Nehru is that state should follow a policy of neutrality or we can also say a kind of distance from the affairs of uh, religion or religious affairs. This is related to uh, in a western conception of secularism, the American model is about a wall of separation between state and polity and the uh, church and the both should not interfere with uh, each other. So, it is said that American uh, legislation cannot or is not supposed to pass a legislation on the matters related to church and similar or vice versa, church is not supposed to interfere in the matters of state or politics. So, here, but however, in um, Nehruvian uh, conception of uh, secularism, the idea of neutrality is a little different or somewhat unique in the context of India with a diverse uh, religion, majority on the other hand or minority on the other. So, he was also uh, aware of the threat or the sense of insecurity among the minorities communities and there the role of neutrality or absolute neutrality is something he was trying to um, modify or trying to uh, put it in such a way which will help in developing a self of confidence or ensuring equality of opportunity to every religion without 
any consideration to their numerical strength. So, however, the question of a state and its neutrality that a state does not patronize or prefer one religion over the other or a state does not have its own religion. It does not mean a state is irreligious, but it means that a state do not have any official religion, but it does engage with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, affairs of religion when there is a domination of one religion over the other or there is a sense of insecurity among the minorities community. So, their state goes uh, to give them protection uh, uh, from any religious uh, uh, domination by the other communities. So, the question of neutrality remains crucial aspect of his conception of secularism. In a letter to Ghansyam Singh Gupta in October 1945 uh, before the independence, Nehru clarified his point of view. So, I am convinced that the future government of free India must be secular in the sense that government will not associate itself directly with any religious faith. Earlier in 1931 in Karachi Congress also which uh, Nehru uh, uh, drafted uh, the resolution on fundamental rights, he uh, it also states that a state shall observe neutrality in regard to all religions. So, it will maintain a distance, a neutrality from any particular faith or all, uh, all uh, religious uh, practices. So, therefore, Nehru always condemned in a strong words and he was very critical of any conception of Hindu Raj or, Raj or Muslim Raj or Hindu Rashtra or Muslim Rashtra. He believed in the people's Raj or a democratic secular nation rather than a Hindu nation or a Muslim nation and the conceptualization of nation on the basis of any religious practices. So, he believed in, in people's Raj and for that a state was expected to follow a policy of coexistence so far as various religions were concerned. If the state tried to infringe upon religious freedom, then that approach would be not only wrong in itself, but will inevitably lead to frictions and troubles. So, moreover any such attempt according to Nehru would be thoroughly anti-democratic. Anti so, here one can also understand the uh, different um, mobilization uh, which was unfolding during the anti-colonial struggle and for uh, a very long time there was uh, mobilization on the basis of religious lines also which uh, deeply disturbed uh, Gandhian, Nehruvian conception of uh, uh, concep conception of India or Indian nationalism which is based on secular, uh, secular principle. Of course, Gandhi and Nehru differ in their conception of secularism, but nonetheless they wanted India to be a secular India without any consideration to any particular religious community and uh, uh, therefore, Nehru has a very strong critique or he was a vocal critique of any conception of Hindu Rashtra or Muslim Rashtra and he wanted India to be free from any religious uh, influence or uh, religious character to uh, provide opportunity or equal opportunity for different religions without interfering in any particular religion which he thought may lead to further disharmony or rights. So, the religious violence and rights are not something unheard of, it was more frequent and the social structure which is deeply hierarchical or violent is something which uh, he wanted to uh, eradicate and only way to eradicate such uh, social divisions on the basis of religion was possible through a state which should be a secular state and which should maintain a neutrality from any forms of uh, religions practices or any particular religion. Now, thirdly to Nehru, secularism also meant a certain mental attitude and this is not just about the political aspect of secularism or as we have discussed just about a state but he wanted every community or every individual or every Indian to develop a particular mental attitude towards other. Here other within quote means different communities or religious differences. So, uh, to Nehru secularism also meant a certain mental attitude on the part of various communities. Particularly in India with the variety of religious groups, 
it becomes most essential that they should develop an attitude which can bring about harmony and feeling of fraternity towards one another. So, how to deal with other, how to engage with other? If uh, uh, one, so one of the uh, uh, strength of religion is it gives a particular world view which uh, with certainties about religion and which uh, certainties about morality and ethics, how we should lead the life, how we should deal with others. And we have seen certainly in European experiences where other is seen as a threat, as an existential threat. So, if one is guided by one's religious beliefs and faith, then uh, his or theirs encounter with the other or different, uh, the one who is following or believing in different faith is somewhat uh, uh, violent, somewhat um, uh, based on mistrust or kind of uh, seen as an existential threat and which leads to perpetual violence as uh, European countries have experienced uh, such uh, religious violence. Gandhi, Nehru and Congress wanted to avoid such path of religious violence where each uh, see other as a existential threat and then therefore, a kind of separation and other things. So, partition is and a result of such uh, uh, such things, but the future India or the modern India that uh, Nehru wanted to build or uh, 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 gave a uh, dominating shape or a kind of very uh, effective institutions and somewhat he have been uh, he has been successful in uh, giving a secular character to Indian state and uh, uh, secularism becomes a article of faith for many of uh, or millions of Indians, which is certainly now under uh, some uh, somewhat uh, revision or somewhat uh, re-articulation, but the secular characteristic of Indian state is by and large uh, result of uh, Nehruvian understanding of um, uh, the state and its role, where uh, he wanted uh, secularism to be uh, accepted by the state, by different uh, communities and they see each other and the interrelationship between them should be governed by the secular uh, belief rather than by uh, their own particular religious faiths and beliefs and that will lead to a, a stable society, uh, harmonious society and develop a kind of fraternity which is desirable for India's progress and development. So, to Nehru, it was quite clear from the beginning that the realization of secular ideal depended largely upon the attitude adopted by the majority community, the Hindus towards the other minority communities. So, there is a kind of neutrality, but at the same time some kind of protection to the vulnerable communities or the minorities. So, repeatedly he emphasized that the Hindus must always remember uh, that the interest and the well-being of the minorities are their sacred trust. If they fail in their trust, then they injure not only the country, but themselves. So, any narrow and aggressive attitude on the part of the majority community would create a feeling of apprehension in the minds of minorities communities. And he opined that it was much better to displease a few persons to lose an election rather than fail in the ideals, uh, ideals of secularism. So, he, uh, he had such a strong faith in secularism and secular ideals that he was prepared to uh, subject himself to critique or displease uh, uh, his enemy and Gandhi certainly from 1930s developed a lot of enemies because of his views on religious matters and uh, the, um, uh, uh, the role of um, uh, secularism in Indian polity or Indian nation and the kind of um, um, relationship he wanted to develop between Hindus and Muslims. So, for uh, Nehru also the protection of religious minority is the responsibility or uh, developing a sense of confidence among those who are uh, in the minorities is something which he wanted majority community or Hindus to, uh, uh, to shoulder. And um, if it is not done or if uh, such sense do not prevail among the minorities, 
then it will lead to a kind of harm to the communities and also to the social harmony which is required. So, finally, he wanted secularization of all areas of social life as we have discussed and Nehru recognized how deeply religions like Hinduism and Islam penetrated into the social life of India. Therefore, he wanted to secularize every sphere of Indian, uh, Indian society. So, here one can also make a distinction between secularism which is a belief, which is a theory, which is a article of faith and then a process of secularism which should enter every sphere of uh, uh, individual and community life and the interpersonal relationship should not be governed by religion which is the case even today or the caste or any other form of hierarchical uh, relationships. So, Nehru also talked about the role of secular state in the process of secularization. So, he con his concept of secular state was based on this following assumption that no matter how great one religion might be in the first sense, the state cannot identify with it or with any other religion. It cannot attach itself to any one religion and declare it as the state religion. So, uh, the state may be nourished by all or by none. So, there may be the existence of many religions or one religion, but a state cannot identify itself with that uh, religion no matter how much great that religion uh, might be. Uh, so, in the, in the conception of um, uh, many um, leaders who thought about a theor uh, theocratic state as in the form of Hindu Rashtra or Muslim Rashtra, Nehru conceptualized Indian state or modern Indian state on the secular line where state does not have its own religion and do not affiliate itself with any religion no matter how great that religion is. Second, in Nehru's views a secular state cannot be anti-religious state. It is not a state where religion as such is discouraged. He argued that a secular state must accept the public presence of all religions. Also, to foster cooperation between different religious communities should be a constitutive objective of secular state. So, there the question of neutrality is somewhat tweaked here in a sense that a state does not affiliate itself with any religion and yet it does not prohibit any, any religious groups or it does not discourage any, uh, any religion. So, it acknowledges the public presence of uh, religion and it tries to develop among them a kind of harmony or fraternity and uh, that is the objective of uh, objective of modern secular state which does not mean anti-religion state or irreligious state. So, it is the duty of a secular state to protect religious diversity that is there in India and to undermine inter-religious dominations or to counter any kind of uh, religious domination of one community by the other. So, in a religiously diverse society where the prospects of inter-religious dominations loom large, a secular state's respect for all religions manifests itself as a commitment to minority rights and therefore, the minority rights and protection of minority rights becomes necessary for a secular state where there are always the possibilities of dominating one religious community by the other. So, in that case Nehru justifies state interventions in the majoritarian acts of a religious community. So, therefore, he understand the role of um, state and its forces in maintaining at times the religious dominations of uh, one group over the other. So, he believed that the state use of that the use of force, violence and coercion was necessary for the functioning apparatus of the state it protect it in the instances of external aggressions, armed rebellions and internal disputes such as rights and others. However, it should not be used in the evil spirit of hatred and cruelty. So, these forces which may be helpful in the times of you know crisis or existential threat to the state which uh, he acknowledged, but he did not want it to use for in a negative sense or with the spirit of hatred and cruelty towards the other or any particular communities. So, in collaboration with this, the state requires the uh, to formulate coercive laws and regulation for the maintenance of peace, harmony and unity within its territorial 
jurisdiction. So, a state can regulate the religious violence or uh, control that violence, regulate certain uh, uh, organizations which may lead to uh, law and order problem or pose a threat to the state. So, in that uh, uh, in such context he wanted and therefore, in Nehru we have a, a strong conception of a state um, capable of enforcing its will on the uh, society or in the uh, society which is deeply hierarchical, feudalistic or believes in uh, domination of one group over the other be it on the basis of caste or religion or gender and therefore, in his conception a strong or interventionist state is desirable to create a India which should be a secular India and where there is non-discrimination on the basis of uh, religion, caste and gender. However, the use of such force, violence or regulation is not in ill faith or in evil spirit of hatred or cruelty towards other or any particular religion. So, the idea is to develop social harmony or a society or interpersonal relationship in the society which should develop a true uh, or mutual respect or true faith uh, or uh, solidarities which will help in transforming India socially and economically. So, Nehru also tried without much success to evolve a uniform civil code for the whole of Indian people irrespective of the distinction of religion and caste by introducing many measures of social legislation and to some extent his support for Hindu uh, code bill uh, as proposed by Ambedkar uh, is also because of uh, his belief in uh, reforming the society within or religious uh, groups uh, or community within. So, many measures he undertook, but there is also uh, his acute sense of uh, um, uh, the time, the circumstances which also enabled him to understand the uh, limitation of his time or his, his context. So, he tried these measures, but remain compromised in his success or in his objectives. So, he once wrote that the word secular conveyed to him much more than its mere dictionary meaning, especially in the context of the social condition prevailing in this country. According to D. E. Smith, the definition of a secular state in Nehru was of a religiously neutral body. For example, a state protects all religion, but does not favor one at the expense of others and does not itself adopt any religion as the state religion. It is not a theocratic state it does not favor a particular state over the other and yet it protects all the religions especially when there is a domination of one religious community over the other. So, secondly the process of secularization should extend to the social realms of day to day life which includes the social codes and rules of marriage, inheritance, civil and criminal law, political organization and indeed almost everything else. So, Nehruvian conception of secularism is not limited to the state laws and constitution, but also to transform or to influence everyday life in the society and the way society govern itself through the marriage law, inheritance law, civil and criminal law etcetera. So, lastly the inclusion of provision of fundamental rights and the articles of 15, 25, 26, 28 and 325 further reinforce the secular agenda of Nehruvian state in India, which is distinct from the Gandhian idea, which provided equal amount of consideration and respect to all religious faith. Now, to look at some of the critiques of uh, Nehruvian model of secularism, we find as a liberal democrat, Nehru was mainly instrumental for inculcating into our constitution some of the prominent liberal trends. However, Nehru's model of secularism is not free from criticism and many scholars and political theorists have criticized his secularism on the following grounds. First, they criticize Nehru for his identification of secularism with the defense of minority rights, as if only purpose of secularism is to equally respect all religions and to provide support to all of them. So, uh, here again one needs to make a distinction between Nehru's own conception of secularism or a secular state 
and what is termed as the Nehruvian model of secular, uh, secular state. So, as I was saying that Nehru himself want to use uh, secularism much beyond the political sphere or the affair of the state to uh, encompass all, uh, all aspects of social life or individual community lives to uh, uh, eradicate or to remove all kind of hierarchy be it on the basis of caste, gender or religion. So, his understanding of religion or secularism is very different from the Nehruvian conception of secularism which came to be regarded merely as a protection of minority rights or many uh, argue about the minority appeasement. But Nehruvian conception is much more broader and complex than this conception. But however, as uh, many of his followers came to believe or the practices of a state came to be understood or perceived as merely as a protection of minority, uh, minority rights, hence there is a critique to his conception of uh, uh, secularism. Second, Nehruvian model of secularism hardly help in countering intra-religious dominations rather its main focus was on fighting inter-religious domination. So, for this reason the strength of ne Nehruvian secularism or its defense of minority becomes its weakness and became only a pro-minority secularism. So, as we have discussed that the question of hierarchy within a religion. So, uh, Nehru did understand the um, intra-religious domination of one group over the other group within the same uh, belief or uh, belief system or same religious uh, tradition. However, the conception of secularism as uh, being practiced hardly encounter or counter this hierarchy. So, within Hinduism we see the upper caste dominating the lower caste or Dalit reassertion or uh, uh, self dignity movements uh, and similarly in uh, Islam we see uh, such kind of intra religious domination which hardly uh, get uh, uh, resolved by this Nehruvian model of secularism and that remains one of the critique of Nehruvian model of secularism. So, to conclude however, we find that Nehru regarded secularism as the most essential feature of a modern democratic society and modern India could not go back to the narrow medieval concept of a theocratic state. And he said, if she were to develop like a modern state, how could she believe in the religious theocratic conception of a state, which considers people of other faiths as something beyond the pale, something which should be discarded or something which should be subjugated or controlled or regulated. So, Nehru con secularism was a practical necessity in India as a solution to the problem of religious diversity which was a challenge to her unity, harmony and social stability. So, uh, Nehruvian conception of secularism is uh, much beyond the philosophical or theoretical articulation of the term, but it was to give a, a proper, um, a proper uh, effect in the everyday functioning of Indian state or uh, developing a society which should be uh, peaceful, harmonious despite of being uh, uh, despite of the presence of diverse religions or plurality in terms of religious faiths and belief systems. So, uh, there is a practical concern or pragmatic approach to secularism in Nehruvian conception as well. So, it is a practical necessity or the pragmatic approach which also defines his conception of secularism and not just merely theoretical or intellectual interest in this question of secularism. So, Charles Chester Bowles uh, writes of Nehru as one of his greatest achievements is the creation of a secular state in which the 45 millions of Muslims who uh, chose not to go to Pakistan may live peacefully and worship as they please. So, one of the achievement of Nehruvian state is also um, considering the, uh, the fragile uh, nature or the, uh, the effect or aftermath of partition, the uh, polarization of community on the basis of religion. Uh, uh, in such a context, Nehru by and large was successful in uh, giving a direction uh, to Indian state in a secular, uh, giving a secular direction to Indian state, 
without uh, uh, any consideration to the uh, religious uh, uh, groups and communities. Of course, um, um, uh, that is now somewhat again revisited in the uh, context of uh, post Babri uh, uh, politics, post, post Babri masjid demolition uh, politics in India. But certainly for a very long time India despite of so many riots and communal tensions uh, maintain a secular uh, path and credit to uh, credit for that must be and should be given to Nehruvian conception of secularism or Nehruvian ideals of secularism. So, it was due to Nehru's efforts that India emerged and developed as a secular state in mid 20th century and where there is a great uh, many organizations working towards revivalism of uh, different uh, religious varieties. So, much before independence he played a heroic role in development of a secular basis for Indian polity and he uh, was instrumental along with Gandhi and others to uh, give a decisive secular turn to anti colonial struggle um, uh, differentiating himself for the Hindu revivalist movement on the one hand and Muslim separatist on the other. So, uh, Nehru did play a very significant role much before the independence in giving the secular base to Indian polity, Indian freedom struggle, defining Indian nationalism in a more secular, uh, secular sense than in a narrow revivalist uh, sense of uh, religious nationalism. So, uh, in, in the post independent uh, India certainly when he uh, was prime minister for 17 years he uh, had decisive impact in shaping Indian state as a secular state and we did develop in uh, uh, we did succeed in developing a sense of confidence among the minorities or different communities uh, in India and for a state the membership to a particular uh, community does not or do not entitle him for preferential treatment or a special treatment. So, that is all on uh, Nehruvian conception of secularism. In the next class, we will be discussing his views on internationalism and his contribution to foreign policy and some of the um, um, major contribution he made in um, international uh, politics or in global, uh, global arena. So, uh, on this question of secularism in Nehru, you can refer to some of these texts. Certainly, this uh, recent work by Rajiv Bhargav. Nehru against Nehruvian. On religion and secularism, you get the complex or nuanced understanding of Nehru's conception, Nehru's understanding of religion, and how Nehruvian appropriation of Nehru ideals, Nehruvian I mean the followers of Nehru and their appropriation of Nehru, uh, Nehru, Nehruvian model of religion or secularism was very uh, simplistic and lead to a kind of problematic to the understanding of secularism. So, that you can read from this uh, uh, this article. The other text you can look at is sources of Indian traditions and political thought in modern India and also this uh, text Nehru and secularism from a Paramal, the Indian journal of political science and also Benjamin Jakaria Nehru. So, uh, these are some of the text you can refer to to understand Nehru's concept on uh, concept of secularism. So, thank you uh, and thanks for your patience. Thank you all.